Hello everyone. Today we shall talk about uh, functions of geotextiles. That means for what purpose geotextiles are used. So let us see five functions are there. Each function we shall discuss in details. So first two we can see fluid transmission or drainage and filtration. This, these two comes under the hydraulic functions and the remaining three separation, protection and reinforcement comes under the mechanical things. So let us begin one by one. First one is the fluid transmission or drainage function. A geotextile acts as a drain when it collects and redirects liquid or gas towards the outlet. That is the transmission of fluid is in the direction of in play flow of fabric without any loss of soil particles. You can see these two figures. The first figures, vertical and horizontal drainage. That means below the embankment, the geotextile has been inserted in the ground vertically. So what is going to happen? These are the geotextiles, right? So whatever the pore water is there, whatever the water is there in the ground, that water will start moving in horizontal directions and it will come in, uh, in the geotextile, right? And again, that it will move vertically. After that, it will go in horizontal direction. So what we can say that it collects, it acts as a drain, the geotextiles acts as a drain and it collects the horizontal and then it uh, transport the water in vertical directions, right? Here also you can say drainage behind the retaining wall. This is the retaining wall. Behind that, the geotextile has been inserted and this is the drain, okay? So, whatever the water is coming horizontally, again going down vertically and after that it moves further in this, through this drain, right? So, water may be conveyed vertically or horizontally as I told you. Drainage is related to the role of filtration and is a function of permeability or the spacing, pore opening size or porometry and thickness of the geotextile. These three things are there. That means the drainage depends upon the three functions. The permeability of the geotextile, pore opening size of the geotextile and thickness of the geotextiles. Right? So we can see here how the geotextiles acts as a drainage function or fluid transmission functions. Let us see the next function, which is called as filtration function. In case of filtration function, what we can say that a geotextile acts as a filter. When two conditions are there also, we shall discuss in case of filtration functions. When placed in contact with the soil, it allows seeping of water, retaining most of the soil particles being carried out by the water current. That means, see, this is the dam, tra transition filters in earth dam. You can see this is the earth dam. So, in the center core is there. As we know, core is mostly made up of clay, clay soil. So, core is there. After the core, here we can see the chimney drain is there towards the downstream side. And after the chimney drain, the cell is there. Cell is nothing but it is the pervious soil placed along the downstream side and upstream side. Here also cell is placed, here also cell is placed. So, in between the chimney drain and the cell, the geotextile has been put. Again, here also you can say geotextile along the clay core and the cell layer, geotextile has been placed here. So, what benefit is there? Because at the time of seepage, suppose any seepage is there, the soil particle will, will be retained. The, the dam uh, soil will not go out towards the down stream side and uh, only water will move, right? 
so our dam will remain safe. That's why it says that when placed in contact with the soil, placed in contact with the soil, here also in contact with the soil, here also in contact with the soil. This is the riprap, this is the stones, right? So uh, allow seeping of water, retaining most of the soil particle. So only seepage will take place, but soil need, soil will be retained. So this is the first function. Next we can see, when it comes in contact with the liquid carrying fine particles, it stops the majority of particles whereas liquid passes through the geotextile. Let us take this uh, example, a filter on a perforated pipe. Suppose this is the drain, okay. In the drain, the perforated pipes are there. Along the perforated pipes, geotextile has been wrapped there, right? It has been wrapped there. So, whatever the water, turbid water is coming in this drain will be filtered. That means soil will be retained outside and only water will move through the this drain. So, what benefit is there? The drain will not show. So, these are the two uh, functions uh, of the geot where geotextile acts as a filtration. Next, we can see the separation function. Here, uh, I would like to tell you, whenever you talk about the separation function, separation does not work as an isolation or individual. What does it mean? This function is rarely used in isolation, right? Rarely used in isolation. It is normally combined with one or more of the other function, filtration and reinforcement being most useful. That means whenever we are going to use the geotextile in the pavement or in road construction, this separation, it is, it is also going to work as a separation, separating the two materials, but parallelly, it also performs the function of filtration and reinforcement, right? Geotextile allow two or more soil layers these are the subgrid uh, fine grain soil. This is the coarse grain soil. So, two or more soil layers to act independently. This will act in because here it is the uh, geotextile has been put and it it uh, it is going to separate these two materials, the fine grain soil in the subgrid and the coarse grain soil in the uh, as a base aggregate. So that that is written here two or more soil layers to act independently, yet as a part of the same system. The pavement is pavement, the whole uh, thing is called a pavement. Part of the same system. Separating soils that have different grain sizes distribution allow each layer to function as an independent component of the soil structure. The subgrade will function separately and this base aggregate will function separately. It will not be going to be mixed together. But in this figure you can see here geotextile has been used as a separate for separation. Here this side geotextile is not there. So what is going to happen? These materials are going to be contaminated or it is going to be mixed with the subgrid soil. That means both the, the layers will not work independently. So that, uh, that that is going to damage the road or pavement. So further, we can also uh, say it segregates the materials and prevent mixing. But here you can see geotextile is not uh, uh, laid here, uh, not put here, uh, this side not put here. So it is mixing. For example, during pavement construction, a granular base course is constructed over the subgrid or subbase coarse layer. These are the subbase sub layer or here also we can say subbase layer. So the function of your textile is to prevent the gravel from penetrating and mixing with the subgrid. So if you are going to use the geotextile as a separator, the gravel is not going to penetrate inside the subgrid soil. That's why I told you in the beginning, it separate the two uh, uh, materials, two layers, right, which works independently, though they are the components of the same system. Same system means 
the pavement. So the key factors for geotextile to satisfy these functions are porometry. These three things should be taken care of while using this, uh, the geotextile uh, separate, uh, to separate the materials or for separation function, porometry, toughness, or in abrasion resistance and tensile strength. Next, we can see the next function is protection function. So geotextile protects a material when it distributes a stresses and a strains transmitted to the protected materials. It acts as a stiff re a stress relief layer. Let us see these two examples. First one is surface protection. A geo first one is surface protection. A geotextile placed on the soil prevents its surface from being damaged by such action as weather, layer, light, traffic, surface flow. So you can see geotextile for erosion control. This is the slope, right? Above the slope, geotextile has been laid, right? And above the geotextile, the stone riprap has been placed to control the erosion. So what it says that it acts as a stress relief layer. How? Because whatever the stress are going to generate in these riprap materials and in this uh, slope materials are going to be controlled due to the application of the geotextile. Or we can say it also going to protect work as a protection. It is going to protect, right? The so next, uh, in case this in this in case of surface uh, protection, we can say the next one the interface protection. Interface protection means a geotextile placed between two materials prevents one of the materials from being damaged by concentrated stresses or strain applied by other materials. You can see this figure, say, say figure B, geotextile for slope protection. The first figure, geotextile for erosion control. So what is going to happen? See, this is a geotextile. It, on the uh, above the geotextile, below the geotextile layer, two materials are there. Here, base layer is there. Above the geotextile, bedding layer is there. And above the bedding layer, a stone riprap has been placed. So what we can say that whatever the stresses are going to be developed in between these two materials, right? And the between the two materials, geotextile has been put. So it is going to control the stresses also. It is going to protect the stresses, right? Developed in the two materials. So this work as a protection functions, right? Erosion control, in case of erosion control, in case of slow protections. So that's why it is written here. It says a stress relief layer. A stress, it is, it is going to work as a stress relief layers. So this is about the protection function. Next, we can see reinforcement function. Reimpro improvement of total systems strength created by introduction of geotextile that is good in tensor into a soil that is good in compression but poor in tensor. What does it mean? That means, as we know, soil is strong in compression but weak, poor in tensor, whereas geotextile is a strong in tensor. So both the facilities we are going to provide. Once you are going to incorporate the geotextile in the soil, it will work as a reinforcement, right? The soil will become a strength, it will have more strength. That's why improvement of total system strength. Total system means the whole system. See, in embankment, the layer-wise geotextile has been put inside the embankment. So embankment can take the more load. Similarly, behind the, uh, this uh, retaining wall, the geotextile has been put as a layer wise in the soil. So above, suppose above this uh, road construction, you are going to construct a road. So definitely this uh, part will take more load because the soil consists of geotextile materials, which acts as a reinforcement. In other words, Geotextile performs the function of reinforcement in soil. Figures just now I, I explained. 
some more figures also we shall discuss reinforcement is a collaborative improvement right collaborative means as i told you in the previous slide is the is the whole system whole system means the soil plus the reinforcement as a geotextile so reinforcement is a collaborative improvement in pavement strength created by the introduction of geotextile and pavement layer so in uh, geotextile and pavement both are going to work collaboratively to provide the extent to the soil or to the pavement the re the reinforcement function can be explained or developed through the following three mechanisms let us see this mechanism what is going to happen lateral restraint through interfac interfacial friction between the geotextile and the soil see this is the wheel right this is the pavement okay so what is going to happen when the aggregate layer is subjected to traffic loading this is the tire wheel of uh, wheel of the vehicle so when aggregate layer is subjected to traffic loading the aggregate tends to move laterally in this direction this direction when the load is going to be applied on this pavement the aggregate will move in this direction or in this direction which is called a lateral direction it is restrained by the subgrade or geotextile reinforcement so geotextile has been once you are going to incorporate the geotextile in the road it is going to control the lateral restraint it act as a lateral restraint so soft weak subgrade soil provide very little lateral restraint so grooving develops when the aggregate, uh, aggregate moves laterally suppose you are not going to use the geotextile so what is going to happen once the load is going to be applied by the vehicle right or the traffic the aggregate moves laterally and grooves will be formed okay so lateral restraint due to friction lateral shear force right is going to work uh, work by the this wheel so lateral restraint facilities we can say geotextile with good frictional capabilities can provide tensile resistant to lateral aggregate movements it can control the lateral movement in the right direction or the left left direction or right direction no movement will take place so next figure also we can explain here the first increase bearing capacity so once you are going to use the reinforce uh, geotextile as a, or a, as a reinforcement materials in bearing capacity is going to increase that is by forcing the potential bearing surface failure plane to develop a alternative higher shear strength surface you can see this figure b without reinforcement the you can see the uh, the uh, shear uh, failure shear failure is going to take place like this way okay but if you are going to use the geotextile the reinforced shear for surface will be like this way so the bearing capacity is going to improve it has been shown by the dotted line and reinforced shear for the shear surface by dotted line and reinforced shear surface by this white line you can see here and this is the geotextile the next things we can see membrane type of support of the field loads membrane it can also going to provide a membrane type of support right vertical membrane support so these three functions we also discuss uh, about the geotextile which is going to work as a reinforcement functions so these are the five functions of the geotextiles that we discussed today tomorrow we shall talk about the next topic thank you